Hi class, it's Mr. Falstrom. Welcome to your lesson on multiplying is scaling with fractions. Before we dive in, I just want you to look at the scale. And here are some important questions that we're going to be asking ourselves later on in this video. Bigger than one, smaller than one, equal to one. Let's go ahead and dive in. First things first, the topic of this lesson is scaling. So go ahead and just take a guess about what you think the word scaling means in math. And um, in math, scaling is another word that we use for comparing. Um, and when I say comparing, what I mean is uh, we're looking at how big or small an answer is. Uh, an answer can scale up and get bigger. It can scale down and get smaller. And so to be a little more specific about what we're actually going to be doing uh, um, in this lesson, we will look at different fraction multiplication problems, and we're going to be deciding if the answer is greater than, less than, or equal to a certain number without solving, which is maybe one of the most important things I need to talk about. Um, so when we do these problems, we're not actually trying to solve them. We're not trying to get the actual answer to the problem. All we're doing is we want to just look at it and be able to quickly figure out if the answer is greater than, less than, or equal. So that's really the goal by the end of this video. We're not, we're not actually doing any multiplying. We're just looking at the numbers that are being multiplied and using that to quickly estimate how the answer scales. And so um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at our first problem. And you can see it says 4 times 7 eighths will be blank than 7 eighths. And so let me kind of translate this here for you. This is really what we're trying to figure out. Um, we're trying to figure out will the product, will the answer of 4 times 7 eighths, is that answer going to be greater than 7 eighths? Is it going to be less than 7 eighths? Or is it going to be equal to 7 eighths? So go ahead and just, you know, think about that. We got three choices here. Is 4 times 7 eighths greater than 7 eighths? Is 4 times 7 eighths less than 7 eighths? Or is it equal? So go ahead and just, you know, take a shot. What do you think it is? And... Let me just go ahead and show you, you know, I mean, we're not solving this, but here's a, here's a model. Here's four groups of seven eighths. And if we look at that, is four groups of seven eighths, is that greater than one group? Is it less than one group or is it equal to one group? And, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, after hearing me kind of say that out loud, that you realize, hey, four groups of seven eighths, four times seven eighths means four groups of seven eighths. Four groups is greater than one group. Let's let's do some more problems though, so that we can get it get a hang get the hang of this. Um, this problem we're doing a fraction times a fraction. It says one half times one fourth will be blank than one half. And again, we need to kind of ask ourselves that same question. This 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 problem is asking us to figure out if the answer of one half times one fourth will one half times one fourth will the answer be greater than a half? Will it be less than one half or will it be equal to one half? And um, the key number in this problem, if you notice, you'll see on the left hand side of the problem, we have a half. And on the right hand side of the problem, we have a half. The only number that um, is only shown one time to us is one fourth. So go ahead and just take a guess real quick on what you think the answer is. Is it greater, less than, or equal? Um, so as I was saying, the one-fourth, that's the only number that's shown one time. So we really need to look at this number. This is kind of the key on how we figure this out. Um, if you remember those questions that uh, I showed you at the start of the video on the scale, we're going to look at those now. One-fourth. How big is one fourth? 
Is one fourth greater than a whole? Is it less than one whole or is it equal to one whole? And one fourth is smaller than a whole. And since we're multiplying, um, since we're multiplying one half by a number that's less than a whole, that means our answer is going to be less than, it's also going to be less than. And I know I said we weren't actually going to solve any problems today, but if we actually did one, one half times one fourth, we would get one eighth and one eighth is smaller than a half. But the way that we can quickly tell is just by looking at that that one number and, and going, well, how big is it? And if you know the size of that number, you can you can already tell how uh, big the product will be. Here we got four ninths times three eighths will be blank than three eighths. So again, we got to ask ourselves this same question. The answer to this problem, will it be greater than 3 eighths? Will it be less than 3 eighths? Or will it be equal to 3 eighths? Go ahead and just tell me what you think the answer is. And we'll see in a second how you did. All right. And again, the key number in this problem, the number that's only shown to us one time is that 4 ninths. So again, the question, 4 ninths, how big is that, right? How big is four ninths? Is it greater than a whole? Is it less than a whole? Or is it equal to a whole? Four ninths is less than one whole. So when we multiply um, three eighths by a number that's less than a whole, we're going to get a number that's even smaller than three eighths. It will be less than three eighths. And here we're looking at six elevenths times three thirds will be blank than six elevenths. So again, we just ask ourselves that same kind of question. We're trying to figure out the answer. How big is the answer going to be? Is it greater than 6 elevenths? Is it less than 6 elevenths? Or is it equal to 6 elevenths? Go ahead and tell me what you think. And the key number in this problem, we're going to be looking at Three thirds. That's the one number that's only, sh it's the, you know, out of all the numbers that are shown to us, three thirds is only shown one time. And so we're going to look at that and go, hey, three thirds. Is it greater than a whole? Is it less than a whole? Or is it equal to one whole? So three thirds is equal to one whole. And so six elevenths times three thirds will be equal to six elevenths because again three thirds is the same as one whole any number times one equals that same number so six elevenths times one is equal to six elevenths and here's our final example problem it says one third times five holes will be blank than one third and so again we're just trying to figure out uh is the answer to this problem one third times five holes? Will the answer be greater than a third? Will the answer be less than a third? Or will it be equal to one third? And so if you can just go ahead and uh, tell me what you think the answer is, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. And the key number here in this problem is five again when you're doing this when you're doing these problems just look for the one number that it uh you know you're only going to see uh one number that's only shown you one time that's the number you got to focus on and the question we're going to ask ourselves with five is hey is five how big is it is it greater than a whole is it less than a whole or is it equal to a whole and five holes is bigger than one hole so that means one third times five holes the answer will be greater than one third. So now it is quiz time. So please tell me the answer to this problem. Seven times nine tenths will be blank than nine tenths. Will it, uh, seven times nine tenths, will it be greater than nine tenths? Will it be less than nine tenths? Or will it be equal? 
And the answer is... Seven will be great times nine tenths will be greater because again, um, you can see that I change colors on the seven. That's the important number to look at because nine tenths is shown to us twice. So really, you're looking at the number that you only see once, and you have to ask yourself, hey, is seven greater than one? Is it equal to one, or is it less than one? It's greater than one whole. It means the answer to this is going to be greater. So. That's really the trick for these problems. And our next one, 1 6 times 5 fifths will be blank than 1 6. Go ahead and tell me your answer here. Is it going to be greater than 1 6, less than 1 6, or equal to 1 6? And the key number here is the five fifths again this is the only number that's shown to us one time and so you have to ask yourself uh, is this greater than a whole is it equal to a whole or is it less than a whole and five fifths is equal to one whole which means the answer is equal to one six times one will be equal to one sixth and Last question, three-fourths times two-fifths will be blank than two-fourths. And so um, will it be greater than, less than, or equal to? And the key number here is two-fifths. It's shown to us that one time. And so how big is two-fifths? Is it greater than a whole, less than a whole, equal to a whole? Two-fifths is less than a whole, which makes our answer less than. So here's here was the goal at the beginning of the video. Let's just kind of come back to it. In this lesson, we looked at different fraction multiplication problems. We decided if the answer was greater than, less than, or equal to a certain number. We did that without actually solving the problems. Um. You can always solve them if you're not sure. If you really want to double check, you can always multiply the numbers and actually find out what the actual answer is and use that to help you. But the ultimate goal is that you're able to just look at the problem and just quickly find the answer and and, uh, and, and be able to find it, you know, look at it and get the answer without having to actually do that, ex that extra step, that extra work of actually multiplying the fractions or the whole number. So way to go. You've uh, reached the end of the video. Thanks for participating, and I will see you on the next one. Great job.